If everything you buy for your reptiles is branded as a reptile product, you are wasting your money. So today, let's go over the top five things you should not be wasting your money on anymore. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Everything on this list that you're wasting your money on has an equivalent that is as good or better for a cheaper price. And number one on the list is just useless and you should never use it. But let's just jump right into it with number five, cheap analog hydrometers and thermometers. Cheap gauges are trash. They're garbage. They are useless. Just to give you an idea, this one here is an Exoterra branded one. And Exoterra normally makes really great products. They're a great company. But this alone is 10 bucks and so is this and this is a govi branded and these have been together side by side for a day and here's the the readings this one here says it's 80 degrees in this room which it is every thermometer around this room says between 80 and 80.2 this says almost 90. It's not even close. It's not even close. And the same thing with hydrometers. I always recommend that you buy something like this. There is a link in the description for the exact one that I use. There are several of them. And this one actually is Bluetooth compatible. So if I'm at my desk on my phone, and this is actually goes into the tortoise enclosure usually, and I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder what the temperature is down there. I don't have to get up off my butt and walk downstairs to find out. I pull it up on my phone and that's it. And if you want one of these for several of your enclosures or several of these for your enclosures, you can do that. You can buy a whole bunch of them. They all connect or you can buy a more simple one. This is a Vivo Sun one. My only gripe with these is that they're the battery is super cheap and you have to replace it a lot, but these aren't compatible. They are a lot cheaper. They're still cheaper than one of these and they're more accurate. So all in all, something like this is better and it gives you the min max. So if you're wondering what is the highest temperature that's been in my enclosure or the highest humidity and you're trying to keep an eye on night cycles and night drops and things like that, you got to go with one of these. These are useless. Oh, and I know I'll get the comments. What about these black strip ones? They're just as garbage as the, they're not useful either. Get yourself a high quality one. There's a link down below. I make a couple cents, but it costs you nothing extra if you use that link. Number four, cheap snake hooks. There is no use at all for cheap snake hooks. These actually are not cheap. I don't even have a good example for you because I stopped using these cheap tin foot. They look like, you know, like the old school antennas on cars. That's what they are basically made of. They are so flimsy that if you put just a little bit of weight on them, they bend, they break, they might even break and hurt your snake. I'm a rapper now. And they're freaking expensive for what they are. Literally this hook here, I bought for $14, it has a rubber hook. This thing, I couldn't bend it even if I wanted to. Not that I'm the strongest dude in the world, but you're not gonna break, whatever snake you're gonna have for this, it's gonna be like a ball python or that type size. You're definitely not gonna break this or damage your snake because it has a rubber tip. If you use one of the cheaper ones, one of the cheap ones that, for example, you could buy at PetSmart or Petco for 15 bucks, or I don't know, maybe nine bucks if you get a good deal, they're gonna break instantly, especially the telescopic ones, the ones that kind of like, those are garbage. Don't even waste your money on them. Spend the extra five bucks and get yourself one of these. And a lot of the times, if you buy one of these at your local reptile shop or online at a reptile distributor type thing, then you can buy these for the same price or cheaper than the crappy ones that are more expensive. And even if you need a big boy, like one of these things here, this is uh, allreptiles.com is where I got this. I don't know, I got it from the reptile shop, but that's where they got it, I guess. This is for th things like Burmese pythons, and you'll never find a cheap type of hook that is going to be good for a Burmese python or any large constrictor. You have to have something a lot bigger because it's a bigger snake. And also if you have one of these, which I think is about two and a half feet long, and you're kind of like poking to make sure they know you're there, they're not gonna be able to get up, because that's the thing with retics and things like that is, you need a hook to tap them just to make sure they know that you're there and you're not food, and what's the point if you have something that's only this long, if it can just reach you anyway. And as a bonus tip for this entry, you can make your own. There's a bunch of different videos. I think Eric Chambers actually made a really good one uh, where he used a golf club, which he got for free, and a vise and a grinder, and that was basically it to make your own. Super duper easy, and if you want, you can even put the rubber tips on them, which I recommend, because these sharp guys here, Kratos isn't a big fan. 
Number three is something we've definitely talked about before in this video right here. Decor, stop wasting your money on reptile branded decor. It is no better, okay, let's for example, this guy right here, which is a little bit longer, let's say, but is made of the exact same material as this right here and this right here. Which one costs more? Which one is which? This one is from a reptile store. This one costs $14.99, $14.99. This is $1.25, this is $1.25, and you can get these exact same things made of the same material, the exact same material for real at the dollar store for $2.50. Yeah, I know in the Canada we do it weird and our dollar store has stuff up to $4, but you know what I mean. Basically, you can buy things at the dollar store, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Dollar Ammo, wherever your local store is, and buy these in kind of like the craft section. Usually it's gonna be on like the back wall type thing. And these things are cheap, they are safe for your reptiles. And you can see in a bunch of videos I've done before, I use these all the time. This is all I use. I would never ever buy anything. And this goes for wood and rocks too. I would never buy wooden rocks at a reptile store just simply because you can go outside. And if you're afraid of parasites and things on the wood and things like that from outside, I totally get it. There are safe ways to clean the wood. And I'll put a link in the description below to my buddy, Professor Herp. He did a video on how he sanitizes wood. Great video. And the same thing goes with rocks. With rocks, it's really simple. Stones, you find them outside and you put them in your oven for a little while. Put them in there for 15 minutes at 350 and it's gonna kill everything on there. And because it's a stone, as long as you clean it off first, it, you have no risk of fire. My favorite things to use are things like patio stones. Those, because they're cheap, you can buy them at a Home Depot for three or four bucks a stone, where if you buy a tiny little stone at a PetSmart, you're gonna pay 10 bucks, and it's not even real stone a lot of the time. These things are perfect for if you have a snake, it can kind of scrape along it to shed, or if you want to feed, say, a box turtle or a tortoise on it, so it kind of like keeps their beak nice and trim, or put it in with your bearded dragon, so that it doesn't have nails like diamond, which scratched the heck out of me. All in all, you don't need to buy this when you could buy this. Simple as that. The one I was kind of late in the game on, it took me until a few years ago to realize is number two, substrate. Now there are really great substrates on the market. And again, another Exoterra, I'm not sponsored by them, by the way, I just bought this at kind of like a reptile expo or reptile shop, I guess, right? 18 bucks for something like this. And there are a bunch of different ones of bark and coconut cores and things like that. But I think the most widely used substrates that we all use as hobbyists are things like coconut core and coconut byproducts, basically. So like a repti chip type thing, things like that, and sand. So repti chip is something that, or like a coconut husk type thing, is something that I use a lot of. But I never use something that is branded for reptiles. I go to a hardware store and buy this. So there's something that I use called Beyond Pete. I use that. Now that Beyond Pete has kind of gone out of business or they've changed their brand and aren't really available at the Canadian version of Home Depot home hardware that I'm used to, I've gone to a no-name brand of organic coconut husk. And these actually have a coconut core as well. These are $25. So the amount that this makes is gonna make almost five times what you'd buy from an Exoterra branded one. So the way I worked it out is with a big brick like that, it cost me around $4 to put into one of these four by two by two enclosures. Whereas with an Exoterra branded one, it cost me 12. So literally it's three times the price to go with the brand name one when it's exactly the same, as long as it's organic. Make sure you always get the organic substrates. And this goes with play sand as well. Calcium sand, we all know is garbage. You can use play sand safely. And I know some people will say, well, what about impaction? Well, if you're reading care guides that were produced after 1990, you'll realize that play sand is perfectly safe. It's a builder sand that is gonna be an issue because builder sand is meant to be packed together. Play sand is meant to fall out of your hand, even when wet. So if you've got a little buddy like Diamond, which you really, really love and you don't want him to get hurt, well, don't use calcium sand, first of all, because calcium sand has calcium in it, which makes them want to lick the substrate. Whereas instead, I use an organic coconut core with a play sand, which cost $5 for 50 pounds, where at PetSmart, that exact same weight would cost you almost a hundred dollars. 
It's ridiculous. It's absolutely insane. I remember in 2011, I had two bearded dragons and a leopard gecko, and I went to PetSmart and I bought a whole bunch of this cool colored sand because I wanted to redo their enclosures, and it cost me like 300 bucks. It was ridiculous. It was so stupid. But now I realize I could have done the same project buying just a regular play sand. The brand doesn't matter. No need to ask. The brand doesn't matter as long as it's a play sand, and it's it would cost me like 15 bucks to do the same. So. Substrate is like the it should have been the number one thing, but the number one thing is going to be pr pretty obvious. Let's move on. Just before we move on to number one, if you want to win some free merch, one of this design or the new designs that just dropped last week, you can. We're giving away 10 free shirts as soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers, which isn't that far away, hopefully. So if you want to win, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button, hit like on this video, leave this emoji on this video, and follow the Instagram channel. That's it, that's all you have to do, and we're gonna do a draw live when we had 100,000 subscribers. All right, now back to your regularly scheduled reptile programming. All right, number one, and by far the biggest waste of money for any reptile keeper, heat rocks. I don't even have one to show you because I've never bought one of these. And I think most of us know now, even the new keepers know that these things are garbage. They're trash. They shouldn't be allowed to be sold. They're absolutely useless and they're a waste of money because they're not even cheap. The only real use for heat rock is to cut the cord off and use it as a regular rock. And here's why. These heat rocks are not regulated in temperature. And oftentimes, even if they do have some sort of built-in thermostat, it very rarely works properly. And even putting these on a thermostat, I wouldn't trust. These things are just garbage. There's no use for them at all. If you want a rock that is heated inside of your enclosure, just put a heat rock or a piece of slate or a patio tile or something like that underneath your heat light and it'll grab the heat, just like, you know, in nature. That's what I would recommend. These heat rocks are dangerous. They can burn your reptile, they're not cheap, and they definitely don't work as advertised. I really have nothing more to say. I could go on and on, but heat rocks are by far the biggest waste of your money. Bar none, as far as reptiles go, the biggest waste of your money is a heat rock. Go outside, get a rock for free, clean it up, put it in the oven. <laughs> wash it, whatever you want to do, throw that in your enclosure, wham bam, Bob's your uncle, you paid no dollars. Go out and buy yourself a sub, kid, I don't know, whatever. So there you go, those are your top five waste of money and your alternatives that you could actually buy or get for free and they're actually better or equivalent. So what do you think? Is there something on this list that I forgot? Should I make a part two? Let me know in the comment section below and uh, if you want it, I'll make it. And as always, I want to say a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking awesome. I really appreciate that everything that you do. And I hope that you guys like watching the videos early, discounts on the merch, you know about videos in my collection that I don't talk about on this channel whatsoever. And we're starting this new thing, Patron of the Week. And this week's Patron of the Week, Snakery Bakery. Man, he took a chunk out of my ear there, ow. Snakery Bakery is actually responsible for these three designs. So if you wanna buy some cool merch, these are the, some new designs that dropped last week. Snakery Bakery is the artist behind it, extremely talented, and I'll throw a link of Snakery Bakery's website down below, super cool prints. Hey, there's another Patreon perk. If you're Patreon of the week, I'll just promote your business. How about that? Okay, I think we plugged absolutely everything. My ear, I don't know if it's bleeding, but I gotta go feed this guy because he seems a little bit hungry. Because we do videos twice a week, that means that I will see you on Monday.